Uh, Son and Kane. A little bit of luck second half with a couple of moments from Ivan Tony. Could have done better. But for Spurs, this is it's huge. And that's what they want. Who's going to meet them then in the final? Tomorrow is the second semi-final. It's a massive Manchester derby. It's live from Old Trafford. 7.45 is the kickoff. We're on air at 7 o'clock on Sky Sports Football. And a reminder, the final isn't until April the 25th. Now it's been pushed slightly back. Plenty of time to rest before then. So it finishes up 2-0 here at the uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. A big performance from Spurs in the end when they needed it the most. That first goal from Musa Sissoko, he did say that he really needed it. We're going to go through all of the goals, the sending off, the disallowed goals. Oh, there's so much to discuss. We're going to do it straight off. Musa, many congratulations. Do you know the song that they're playing in the background? Thank you. Uh, to be honest, no. I don't know this song. So Spurs are on their way to Wembley by Chaz and Dave. A long time before you came here, but you're going back to Wembley, a home for you for so many matches. But what does it mean to get there in a cup final? Yeah, you are all uh, very happy with, with that. Like you said, it's been a long time. You're, we've been waiting for, for that moment. So I think today we, we play a great game against a, a good team. I think it was a, a good battle. But uh, we deserve to win, so now we're going to go to, to Wembley. We don't know yet against who we're going to play, against United or, or City. But we have to, to be ready, it doesn't matter who we're going to play. And uh, a final, you don't, you don't only play a final, you have to, to win it. So let's, uh, yeah, let's be ready for, for, that, uh, for that game and hopefully we can, we can bring the, the trophy uh, at home. You spoke to us beforehand saying how you wanted an early goal. I think you were talking about the team, weren't you? Not yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was talking about the team, but I'm, uh, I'm part of the team. So we did it and I think it was, it was good to, to score an early goal. And after we, we managed the game, even if they were pushing, but I think we controlled, we controlled totally the game. And uh, we scored the second goal in the second half. And yeah, we deserve it. So congrats to, to all the team. And uh, yeah. And I think all the support, support uh, Tottenham fans will be happy with uh, with that victory today. And now let's uh, let's be ready for for the next game on on Saturday. The major concern, I suppose, was that VAR goal. Did you have a gut feeling whether it was offside or onside? Ah, to be honest, I was sure it was offside because I was uh, the last man and I could see him. He was behind me, so I was I was sure it was outside. So I wasn't worried about about it. So I, I told the, the lad, so he's offside, so, and the the VAR show show it. So. Again, congrats to, to everyone. Let's enjoy it and, uh, and yeah, let's go to the final. Getting to the final is great, but it's all about winning it, isn't it? Do you feel now is the time for Tottenham to start picking up trophies? Yeah, of course. We are in final, so it's the time to, to win it. And uh, our last final was uh, Champions League and we, we lost it. Uh, we know that feeling when, when you lose a final, so we were all disappointed for, for many months. And now we're going to have the opportunity to, to play a final at Wembley. And uh, like I said again, you don't, you just don't, you don't play a final. You have to to win it. So it doesn't matter the way. So we're gonna try our best to to win and bring bring that trophy at home. Well, well done today. First goal of the season, and you are the Carabao Man of the Match. If you'd like to make your own presentation, please. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much. I'm very happy with uh, with that. But like I said, the most important thing was to to win, and I think we did it as as a team and. I'm very happy with that and especially with that trophy, so thanks for, for everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Every week we that was a hell of a speech. I've <laughs> never week. seen that before. He really took his moment there, didn't he? Brilliant performance from him, a man of the match performance. Um, for Spurs, look, they're into a final. They're obviously absolutely chuffed. The fans will be so chuffed as well because they've taken their fair share of criticism so far, haven't they? They have done, yeah. But this is why you bring in someone like a Mourinho. I mean, this, this for, if they go on and win it, it'll be like validation that they made the right decision in letting Pochettino go and bringing in Mourinho. But as I said, when he, he got the job, I always felt they were going to be a lot closer to winning the trophy because he's a serial winner. Mm. He understands what it takes and I think that's now festering onto the, the pitch with the players because, as I said, they've not won a trophy for, for a long time now. But when you've got a manager who is a serial winner, that mentality is seeping into the players and you can see now how hungry they are to win one. Sam, it could have been a banana skin this. Obviously, Spurs would have been the favourites, but Brentford, like we said before the game even started, they're taking down four Premier League oppositions. And this match, it could have been quite difficult for Spurs. Yeah, it was. Thomas Frank alluded to it earlier on that he was saying there's no disrespect to the other four teams that they beat along the way, that Tottenham was, he, in his words, was a top 10 team in, in Europe, you know. So to come to Tottenham and, and to compete and, 
at 1-0 have the goal disallowed, the game plan for Brentford was, was working quite well. Um, big chance for Ivan and it could have been a little bit different, but a good professional performance from Spurs. Mm. It was, Jamie, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. And I think from Spurs' point of view, you know, Darren and I played for the club, and I think to a certain extent, fans right now, we all get brainwashed because of getting into the Champions League top four and what it means to the owners and the money that it brings to the club. But when you look back at your career, you want to win trophies. Mm. So for the players to keep the likes of Harry Kane happy and all the, all the rest of them, you've got to win trophies. So for Spurs, this is a massive statement. Of course, it's going to be difficult against two good sides, but they proved they can beat Man City with a really good performance. They, early in the season, I know it's a different, different Manchester United right now, but they demolished them. And it's, to a certain extent, the good thing for them now, they've got so much to look forward to, so many good league games, they can put this to bed now, and it's really something to look forward to. And I think, like Darren says, you know, with the team they've got right now, and, and they're so explosive up front, they can beat anybody. Yeah. It was important to get that first goal and to get it earlier on. Musa Sissoko was the man that said that, and it came from this cross from Serge Regulon. Yeah, and I think we were talking about, you know, half-time, when, when you think about Sissoko, he's a big guy, he's a good attack, you know, he attacks the ball extremely well. He should be doing that more often, shouldn't he, with the qualities that he has, Darren? Yeah, 100%. We said it before the show started that he needs to do more of this, get himself in the box. And when it goes wide, he, he takes a risk. He understands that no one's picking him up and getting into that space between the two centre-halves, the pace is already on the cross. All you've got to do is direct the header and he directs it superbly well into the top corner. Physically, you can see he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. He's a modern-day midfielder. He's got the attributes to, to do that over and over again. And yeah, it's a great ball. The question marks between the distances of the centre halves and whether uh, Jan Out should have been tracking him, but it was a great finish and a great start for Tottenham because Brentford started the game quite well the first 10 minutes. And you've got to be different. You've got to have different ways of scoring. You've got Son and Kane, the emphasis on them, and teams have obviously so aware of what they can do. So if somebody else can pop up with goals from midfield, they're worth their weight in gold, and that's what they need to do. They need to chip in with goals from different areas. We also spoke about the importance of Ivan Toni and how brilliant he has been for Brentford and the goals that keep coming. He had his own chances today. The second one we'll get to, which was disallowed in the end because he was offside. But this chance early on as well, Darren. Yeah, I mean, it's great play from, from Umbremo. I mean, he could even go down there, but here now, when it gets back to him, I mean... Maybe if he shows a little bit more conviction there, maybe goes to meet the ball a little bit and, and really try and wrap his foot around it. He kind of waits for it a little bit and then it's kind of a little... What about if he lets contact? it go, Bentley? I ain't never doing that. I know you're not letting that go. You've got a Canos behind you. I don't think we could see that again. If he lets that go through his legs, Canos has got an open oh, goal. It's one of them. I didn't, I didn't know you were driving. <laughs> Is that the one? I didn't hear I can you. Hear you. Here we go, look. Look at Canos at the back post. Let it go through your legs. There, yeah, open I mean, goal. But you're not letting that go, no, are you? No, That's listen, the difference between midfielders and strikers. I'm finishing that off. But it's one of them where it's great defending, but... As I said, Brian and Bremer, he probably could have gone down because there was contact there between him and, and Sanchez, I think. But this was great defending and unfortunate for him. He had another moment, another unfortunate moment, actually. Yeah. The goal that he eventually scored was checked by VAR, was given offside. It was Musa Sissoko's foot, actually, that was just behind him. How big a moment could this have been? Well, if you look at it, just before that, there was a, a long throw. So he's looking at set pieces was a potential way of getting a goal against this organised Spurs side. And it, Ivan, yes, he's going to be very disappointed with the VAR offside goal but he'd be more disappointed with the actual first opportunity yeah. that he missed yeah. it's a fantastic bit of movement pulled round the back top delivery made himself space and he's just not got enough on it here you're looking at I'd like to see the other angle just because you can see Ivan's glove is actually covering his knee so you can't see it too clearly just to see if it was 100% VAR offside but it looked for me there just slightly off yeah we can have another look at it again because actually Jamie when you saw it in real time you did say that looks offside I thought it was just VAR offside going. because it, it, it just had that look to it I think they're really unlucky Laura I don't like this rule I think it actually we should almost get back to basics to what it was originally with the offside law when, with its, uh, if your foot's over the line when we're talking about knees and other body parts I know we've used any part of the body you can score with I think that's really unlucky but it's the law, and that's, that's just the way it is. But that hasn't really cleared it up. I mean, Moussa Sissoko might have sized 15 feet. We can't really even see him, can <laughs> yeah, we, though? Yeah. I think that's what Sam was saying about the other angle. But for Ivan Tony there, I mean, it, it's, it's double heartbreak for him because in his head he's thinking, I should have scored the first one. Then when he, does, he gets the second opportunity and puts it in the empty net, then that's chalked up for offside. It's, it's harsh. You're a striker. How's he feeling right now? It's going to be thinking about it all, all night. I mean, hopefully he's got a game coming up soon so he can put that to bed. But th this evening, tomorrow, you'll be thinking, oh, if, it could have been all been different. If that goes in, VAR don't give that goal, it could have been a whole different outcome. Because yeah. 1 0, they're in the game then, but you miss the chance, but then you get to pull it in, but it's rolled up for VAR. It's disappointing, but listen, he'll take positives from that, which is he was getting the opportunities against a Premier League side. And, and that's the positive mm. you have to take when you're a Championship striker playing against one of the very best teams in the Premier League. You've got to look where your opportunities are and how many opportunities you had. And he had chances, so he'll use that positive.
And it was Human Son eventually that made it 2-0. It only took seven minutes after that incident that we just saw for him to do it. And actually, it was just a brilliant goal, wasn't it, Darren? Yeah, I mean, his third man running again. I mean, he, he anticipates Harry Kane dropping into the space, but it's a turn of pace in behind. And it's the composure at the end. Absolutely superb. He goes through. He kind of waits till Harry Kane gets it and turns. And the moment he sees where Harry Kane is in comfortable possession, he just thinks, you know what, I've got an opportunity because Ethan's been pulled out into the into midfield. He turbos in behind. But it's a great finish. It's the second touch, composure, and he finishes it off. When the ball goes into Kane, the alarm bells started to ring for me. Obviously, with the Brentford hat on, you, you see that Kane sets it off to Undermay, and you just see Song. He's got no intention but into running behind. And when he runs in behind, the pace, the ability to touch across the centre half, so they can't touch him, and the finish. That is why he's world class. No, I think you say that. What I love about Son is we talk all about his attributes, but look at the desire that he shows. He's like a hundred metre sprinter there. Yeah. He's on the mark and he's off. And then he's got the ability and the finesse with those two little soft touches just to set up the, the yeah. goalkeeper to sit him down. Look, he sees that ball goes into, an, an, into Kane, then into Dombla, and look There's at him. There's the trigger, there it is. Look there, at him it? go. He's got two off. quick centre backs. The right, the right back can't catch him. And it's a brilliant finish. By, by the time he takes that second touch as well, that allows him to open up the whole goal. Because yeah. when he takes the first touch, if he